for this week's Down to Biz with Ash and Jeff. This week we're doing Archetypes Part 2. So if you haven't already had a look, check out Archetypes Part 1 in the Down to Biz archive. This week we promised to take you through the 12 different types of archetypes. And what we've done in this model is we've laid them out over a matrix which covers different attributes. Leadership and confidence, being anti-establishment and giving excitement. Trust and partnership across with reassurance and knowledge. So let's have a look at the ruler. This is typically the person in control. They're a manager. They're effective. They're the king of the castle. Microsoft, been leading the way in computers for a long time. Then you've got the sage. These guys are experts. They're thinkers. They're very confident. They've also got a lot of credibility. Looking at a market, you can't help but think IBM takes this archetype. Then there's the hero. The hero is the person who's righting wrongs. They're out there challenging. They're competitive. Virgin bring this to different categories that they enter. They find somebody who's old and slow and kick them off their pedestal. The explorer is a searcher and a seeker, very adventurous and very self-sufficient. When we look at Nokia and their constant innovation, you've got to think that they're an explorer. Then there's the outlaw. The people who want to play outside the rules. They're rebellious. They're shocking. They're out there to make a stand. In 1984, when Apple threw a sledgehammer through Microsoft's parade, they said they're not going to play by the rules. Then there's the creator. Innovative, imaginative and experimental. Intel's definitely this archetype. They're always talking about taking their innovation to the next step. There's some brands who are out there just having a joke, having a laugh. They're the clown, they're trickster, they're playful, they're taking things lightly. When 3 launched in this market, that's where they went. Then we've got the magician. They're a shaman or a healer. They value, value magical moments, they're a catalyst for change and they're charismatic. It's a really emotive archetype and when we look at this, you can't beat the real thing. And in terms of emotion, taking it one step further is the lover. When it comes to the passion, the sex, the erotic aspects, you can get brands like Porsche, who are highly emotively connected to us. And the innocent, pure, wholesome, happy, optimistic. They value the simple pleasures in life. And when it comes to purity, Evian stands out. It's straight from the French Alps. It's untouched. When we get to the carer, it's often not just the products, but the brand. It's about caring for other people, about being selfless and altruistic. You see the body shop as an example. They take their principles to the way they source their products and deliver them to market. And then we've got the regular guy. Often one of the best advantages of this is that it lets you talk to a really broad audience. It's not pretentious, it's reliable and dependable. It values routines and it's predictable. Kraft is the perfect example of this. They've got a product which sits under the brand for almost absolutely everybody. It really suits the everyday guy or girl. So that's a brief overview of 12 archetypes. Next time we're going to take you through our system of how you can actually take an archetype and bring it to life for your business. So we'll see you then.